And what you do is you get your hand and you just shove it right up inside that watermelon, like right up inside, right in the belly. Mm. Look at that, right up in there. I'm stuck. Can you just pull mine? I got my hand stuck. Oh. <sighs> Ew. I think I'm. we should still have these to eat. Yeah, you can pick away at it if you want. Yeah. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. Because oh, they look good on you. But it also helps, uh, I feel like, helps me keep track of if we do do any voices, right? It could, oh, it could yeah. It's, yeah, when you do voice work, it always helps when you it can does. hear in your own head. Same with on stage, having the monitor on stage. You're like, oh, I can oh, hear it. It's I on. love and having like, a lizard oh, on stage. On spot. Yeah. What? A lizard on stage? What do you mean? Is that we, what they call them? We just said you like to have a monitor on stage. Yeah? I like a Komodo myself. Wait. What? So are you talking about monitor lizards? I'm talking about a monitor to hear the speaker. Sorry. Wait, is that, a, is that a lizard? The monitor lizard is a, a very large lizard from Africa. Oh, so oh should I take you, off my cap? I don't It's up For to you. For respect of the podcast? Doesn't matter. It's up to you. It's whatever the, whatever the wild thing wants to do while she's on the prowl. I feel like it's cool to see the silvers in my hair. Oh, wow. Lady Greystoke is in the house. <laughs> wow. It's true. You can, I, that looks great. Is, doesn't one of the X Men girls have a, a silver yeah. streak in her hair? This is natural, man. Which which X Men is it Isn't or X that Girl? A storm. Storm. So you're like slightly turbulent, incoming tropical weather. You never know if I'm gonna be in friendly or dark. <laughs> Whoa! What did you? <laughs> the lightning hit a baby. Yes. What was that? <laughs> I no, you. I hit the in the buns. Oh, in the buns? In the butt. What? You so that way, so that's why I went, Oy! Wow. <laughs> what do you got up that butt? It sounds like, did you sit on a Smurf? What was that? One of the munchkins pops out. <laughs> we want to welcome you to I, munchkin land. Oy! I probably have one of those in my butt. Good Lord. I think we all do. Yeah, no one wants to admit it. Yeah. Ma'am, you have a tapeworm. Oh, no, I don't. That's a Wizard of Oz munchkin. That's one of the lollipop boys. A lollipop. Oh, yeah. How creepy were they? Yeah, poor guys. <sighs> Dementoids. Did you believe that one of them hung itself or no? A lollipop boy? Well, not the lollipop boy exactly, but one of them. Remember? Someone. Remember uh, that, that there's that. Oh, that one That's, scene. They think it's ha he hung himself. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't think so. I don't think. <laughs> Why would a lollipop boy Well, I'm not saying himself? lollipop boy wanted the munchkins. We don't know if it's yeah. for certain, but you think it'd be a lollipop well, boy. Well, first of all, how does, a lo how does a munchkin even get up to a tree branch? <laughs> So that's your first clue that it never happened. Like if a munchkin is going to commit suicide, he's probably going to like jump off an armoire or a footstool. Well, yeah. You're not getting up in a tree when you're shorter than a right. chipmunk. Maybe maybe that Judy Garland, maybe she's like, here, I'll help you. Oh, oh this is this is <laughs> trouble. <laughs> here, let me throw let some me munchkin throw treats into the branches. <laughs> <laughs> Up you go, little feller. Go along, little scamp, and here's a rope in case you slip. Just put it around your little tiny neck. <gasps> Poor little guy. Are we recording? Uh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's hit the theme music. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Harland Highway podcast. Melissa, and I'm going to butcher your last name just like I always do. I don't think you've ever butchered. Let's I have. See it. Go ahead. Melissa Alamator Velociraptor. <laughs> no. I like Velociraptor. Close. Val Val Valedictorian. No. Val 
Vala Senor. Via Senor. Oh, is it? Yeah. See, I always you mess it, it up. Huh? You could do it. You, Say it again. A good intro. Yeah. This is uh, the Harland Highway intro. Val, 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 Val Senor? Is that what you said? Via Senor. Via Senor. There you go. I know, but I always do, I always mess it up. Can I? Could you just be like Melissa Smith for once? <coughs> no. You're allergic <laughs> to Smiths. <laughs> wow. Um, so let's get right into a comedian, actor, author, artist, singer, impressionist. So many juicy things, right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I'm really proud of it. Yeah, I'm you proud should of be having a colorful palette as a person. Yeah. You know, you have a really like you do a lot of things like some people do one or two or three things you do like I can't contain it. Yeah, it's got to ooze out everywhere. Every yeah, Ew. it's good though, right? No, it feels good. It, feel, it feels good when when you just like you, you think, should I have taken another path? Should I have, you know, worked in an office? Should like sometimes as a creative person, you think that because you right. you go, is this a normal life? Is this can this sustain? And then. When you realize you just can't stop it, you realize you made the, the right choice. In fact, you probably didn't even have a choice. Yeah, no. Yeah. There was always something telling me inside, like, if I avoided it or avoided comedy, yeah, I would feel very, like, empty. And I'm like, oh, it's because I'm not listening to it. And did, at what age did that little voice oh, kick in? 18, Immediately? 19 years old, right when I started doing Oh, in your teens. Lines. Yeah. I already knew oh. early. And but did like, you know before that, was there a little thing going, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to be doing something in front of people or that's yeah. how I felt when I was like, when I was like a little guy, like, like 10, 11, I started to feel like something's the little sparkles. Yeah. Yeah. That's something's, how I felt too. Yeah. How cool to just wow. listen. Yeah. And no one, my parents were like, what the hell? Don't do this. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm going to listen. Yeah, yeah, you, you listen to the voice. You Imagine how many people in life don't, though. That's a shame. There's a lot of talent out there. Imagine, yeah, people that never realized or listened to that voice. And I've met a lot of people in life who have regretted it. They've kind of gotten older and like, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? But it's not easy. That's it's the not thing. It's not easy. And if there's people in, the, in your life that are, that are pushing you in other ways, and it's hard to, like, Clean it out and be like, no. I'm not oh wait, so your your folks won't su weren't supportive of it. They tried when to I started, no. Yeah. And uh, but it wasn't wow. until I started making the moolah, then they yeah. were like, okay, I guess she yeah. could maybe make a living. <laughs> we don't really like what you're doing, honey. But that new house you bought us sure is making us start to rethink things. <laughs> Actually, I do have a, a, a condo, okay? Not to brag. What? Oh. Talk to me. No, no, no. It, but I, I didn't... This was like within three years of SNL. And my, yeah. my mom was the one that was like, hey, you got to stop crashing here. Get a place. You can you can invest now. And I was like, I don't know. I, I feel like I need to crash around people's... <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know. But it took me some time to... Wait, so you were still living with Mummy Amo when you were... No, no, no. I had apartments. Okay. But I never bought property oh, until... Oh, Okay. A few years ago. And how does that feel? It feels pretty damn cool. So it's a condo? Yeah. Can you hear people through the walls? No. You Sometimes will. I'll hear it. No. I've been there three years, buddy. You will. All right. <laughs> going to happen, guy. I'm telling you. No, I haven't mm -hmm. heard. I only hear dogs sometimes. And TV, maybe. But it's not. That's pretty thick wall. But you just said you heard a TV. Well, very faint, okay? But through the wall. I Got you, kid. Damn it. Right out of the gate. <laughs> Condo grab. <laughs> Power slammed. <laughs> Tried to deny it. Heard it faintly. Well, they probably got, they mm -hmm. probably get on my, they it's probably. too late. All right. It's too late, You know kid. what? You win. All right. Yeah. Got you. All right. Just going to sit here and glow. So what, what's the solution? Just gloating for a little longer and then All right. let it just wash over me that I won the through the drywall competition. <sighs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. I don't hear that. Yeah, that's not that's gloating too much, yes, right? That's too much. Yeah. It's okay. 
Um, but I'm glad you got a condo. Isn't it nice to have your freedom? Yeah. Did you pay for, did you put the, all the lettuce out immediately or are you still paying? No, I'm still paying some mortgage. Okay. But. When will you be done? How many years? I don't know. Okay. Let me know when that's taken care of and uh, might even ask you out for dinner. What the? Just might. <laughs> After the mortgage is paid. When everything's clear. <laughs> I don't, I don't need any, I don't want any trouble until that's kind of clean up your mess. And then I think there might be a dinner in it for you. All right. Ew. Now, speaking of your, <laughs> speaking of your creativity, boom. My book. Talk to me about this book. Come on. So it's called Whoops, I'm Awesome. Yeah. And uh, it's a it's kind of a activity fun book for <laughs> <laughs> adults in your child. Really? Yeah. Like, give me an example. Like, well, it's... like I have a I drew my own version of a back of a cereal box, and you have to play games. And then it's kind of eh, a little self helpy, but there's yeah. a lot of jokes. It's it's very fun in my story. And then there's a lot of emo drawings. And did you do all the artwork? Hell yeah. Look at this. I love it. Yeah. Is that you? I guess so, yeah. That's me jumping in a rainbow water puddle. I love it. I love it. And it deals with sort of like, um, as you said, a little bit of self-help. Yeah. And meditation and reflecting and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think uh, I... I try to make it, I didn't want it too serious because I, you know, there's corny books out there that are yeah. too much. You're like, easy. Yeah. Right? You're getting too fluffy on me. So yeah. I made sure there's mistakes. And that's why I put whoops. Whoops, yeah. There's like, I left a mistakes in there where I said, there's a crossword puzzle and I had on one word there to find rice and I forgot <laughs> to write it in there. So I said, sorry, it's not there. <laughs> so, so the crossword puzzle was one <laughs> word. <interesting>, yeah. <laughs> rice. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Next one, next one you can add, add a roni to it. It'll be the, the more complicated one. Well, I want it because my art is very similar to Shel Silverstein. And I oh, yeah, I the, get, the giving tree, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I get that comparison a lot. And okay. he is one of my favorites growing up, too. Yeah. But I wanted just a book of just straight art, just doodles. Okay. But I think because of what's in the world they people like activity books coloring books these days yeah. so i kind of had interactive to, um, yeah interactivity yeah but there, see i i love the simplicity of that I, like, that's what people I, I think they're drawn to that a lot yeah so, some some artists just get too busy and too detailed but that's just like it reminds me of remember that uh, book le petit prince yes. the little prince standing yeah. up on that that planet yeah but that's you with your little tree house and see there's a maze yeah, I saw that. You go hiking in my book. So you go hiking in the book. Yeah, there's a there's a like a corn you take maze. Naps. I tell you, take a nap. Look <laughs> at that. Well, she, well th there you See? go. Yeah, it's like Candyland. I love that, man. And so it's, I want to break down like the, the yeah. different categories because this is stuff I'd tr I've tried to do in my life. First one, talk to me about meditation because oh. that's that's something that I think a lot of people toy with, but. Don't necessarily like well, what's your method for meditation and what? Well, now it's TM. I've been doing the transcendental. What's that? You've heard, you must have heard of this here in LA. I, there's a lot I've heard. That's all I've been hearing about is the trans stuff. But what do you? Well, <laughs> it's transcendental meditation. It's been around a long time. So if you meditate enough, you'll change genders? No, you. What's transcendental? You goofy. What's what? <laughs> What's transmentaltation? Okay, wait. It's it's it goes way back. It's it's when you get um, kind of like a mantra that's only for you. Okay. You, go to, you get you practice with the school. It's like a little class. It's not a big deal. It's nothing fancy. Wait it's a minute. You're you're meditating at Sea World? No. Well, where are you getting the mantra? It, I got it at the school, that the like the uh, building, the offices there in Los Feliz. Okay, what is a mantra? It's, I guess it's just a phrase or a word you oh, repeat I, in your brain. I'm so, sorry, I was thinking of the big underwater, the mantra rays. <sighs> sorry. Okay, so what's <laughs> God? 
Someone get me a munchkin and get me a munchkin quick. Please. There it is. That sounded like a munchkin honestly doing a fart in a movie theater, if I'm being honest. Like, that had a little bit of buttered popcorn and some hot dog relish on it. Good Christ. I think I just started my own mantra. Must kill munchkins. Must. What's your mantra? Can, are you allowed to say it? No, or is it, I can't share it with It's anyone. private, right? Yeah, it's my own. And you is it your it, own one for you? Is it in another language? Like I know sometimes the mantras are umbi gumbali wambaba. Like I think it is. I is yours? It is, yeah. Well, I don't know what it means, but it does sound. It's cool because whoa. when the teacher gave it to me, it, is that okay? Is it Sorry, smelling? I, no, I thought the lid was on it, and oh, I was okay. about to thunder blast Man, my face. I haven't face. seen a Mountain Dew in a while. Whoa! God, ever had a broke back Mountain Dew? <laughs> Those things hurt. Uh, <laughs> Can I get a munchkin noise after that? Please. Yeah, that's about it. That's what you'll hear up on Brokeback Mountain Dew. Wow. Oh, God. Woo. So what language is your mantra in? You know what? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But, but you it's like a chanty type of thing? It's like, just one thing, one word I'm repeating. Oh, like angare, 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 like that type I of, guess so, like yeah. sort of like a rhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, is yeah. it supposed to sort of evoke like a trance-like kind of thing, or just is it is it like a guttural thing that helps you center, angare, angare, like that? Yeah, I think it kind of helps. Well, their 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 thing is how you well, should I be sharing it? Whatever. I mean, it's up to you. I don't, I don't know that. Are there mantra police? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you? It just, you do 20 minutes, so you're actually getting so deep into, like, the almost like an ocean, like you get so deep down into, oh. and all the thoughts and noise just kind of start scattering out. And is it it's supposed it. to, like, like sort it of really clear your head? It really does help me. It does. And you do this how often? I, I tr if I can, twice a day, but usually once these days. <sighs> I tried it once. I, someone was t teaching me all about, you know, meditation and get in a room and, and do your thing and get, you know, try and get everything quiet, get yeah. your quiet. And I was in there and I was like, mm -hmm. uh -huh. have my eyes. Mm -hmm. And the fucking usher came over and said, sir, you're disturbing the other people. They're trying to watch the movie. And I was like, fuck you guy. I'm trying to get into my space. And it turned into a big thing and i don't mean to swear but i was angry i mean were you in the movie theater yeah oh that's on you well i just said get in a room and try to get well if you're gonna laugh maybe i'll never meditate again <laughs> in my life and you can go <laughs> stuff a midget in your glove box how about that you could go hang a munchkin as far as i care <laughs> okay What's, Poor what's the next one? Reflecting. Tell me about reflecting. Oh, are you copying what I'm what I shared in the book? That's right. Yeah, oh. yeah. We're kind of we're doing a step by step through oh, the walks. Okay. Uh, reflecting. I don't yeah. know if I have reflecting in there. Oh. No, I think it's. Uh, look, it's broken down in four different chapters, and it's like, how do I get to that lighter, silly side of myself? So the first one's embracing your kid self. Okay. The second one is like physical being active and stuff. And then the third is mental, and then the fourth is helping others. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. What? What's Did you do random acts of kindness? I tried is that, to. Is that important that, yeah. to you? Yeah. Like, what's the last sort of random... I planted a oak tree on the one of the trails with tree people last month with the tree people you planted yeah. an oak tree so yeah. or it's a future suicide spot for a munchkin no well you said earlier there was a munchkin hanging off a tree you're right i did i mean if you don't like them i love them but you're setting up jumping off <laughs> points oh, man. Wow. all these connections you know my my right. recent act ra yeah, what you random done? act of kindness. Well, yeah. it was kind of spurred by someone else's act of kindness. Mm. I was uh, yesterday. I was in Chicago, and my flight was delayed because they were short one um, crew person. 
right? They're, okay. they're, they're short one flight attendant, so they couldn't leave. Okay. And there was no flight attendant in sight. They were actually going to have to wait for another plane to come from another city, blah, blah, blah. So some lady, one of the customers was a trained flight attendant, and she came forward and said, she went up to the counter and said, I'm a flight, I'm willing to give up my seat, da, 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 and I can act as the flight, and the flight can go. And so she did that and saved us all like probably a day or half a day. So during the flight, I got up and they had her way in the back. I went all the way to the back and I found her and I gave her a $20 bill. I said, lunch is on me when you land. Thank you so much. Hey, that's nice. So her ra- like random that. act of kindness led to mine. Ah. Yeah. I thought you were going to volunteer as a flight attendant. You know what's funny? I did. Before she went up, I went up to the guy and I said, sir, how long is this going to be? He goes, we don't have any idea. Yeah. We, we don't even have anyone in yeah. our scope. And I said, I will slap the dress on and be the flight attendant if you need it as a joke. <laughs> that would be real fun. Yeah. That would have been a fun plane ride with you. That would have been fun. I haven't been in a dress for years. Wow. It's time. Yeah. It's real time to get back in it. Yeah. Papa, don't preach. I'm keeping the baby. Uh, <laughs> wait, what was the... Oh, I had another one, too, I wanted to ask you about. Okay. Oh, hang on. Oh, healing. Oh. Is that one that we should talk about? Do, like, does all this stuff lead to healing? All the meditation and reflection and all that? Self-healing. Do you believe in that stuff? Well, I think yes, because it, 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 I get, I personally feel healed when I'm t- talking about stuff that, that makes me laugh or bugs me in my life or, or art even. Yeah. I think that's all healing. Yeah. And then yeah, connecting yeah. it with other people that are like, I feel that way too. Yeah. <laughs> Those are my fans. <laughs> wow. Who the hell are your fans? <laughs> I feel that way too. <laughs> Sounds like a rowing team likes you or something. What the hell? <laughs> sweet loaf of raisin bread uh, but you like crafts and stuff though this is you you like kind of i'm dangerous games. i'm a dangerous yeah. person because if you, i'm good at crafts i hate to brag it to you right <laughs> i if you teach me something new that's crafty my brain i'll think okay i'm gonna quit everything and this will be my full time i get obsessed and i gotta be careful any any craft i i, I did ceramics recently through the pot you know Mm -hmm. throwing the wheel yeah and i was so good i was like i I could do that like there's it's dangerous for me i like so many crafts out there well and this is perfect because this is summer we're right at the doorstep of summer and this is when i do my summer craft series and so i got some stuff here really oh yeah cool we're gonna do uh i'm gonna teach you some of my get you involved in my summer craft series whoa yeah this is Is uh, something nasty no, no, this is this. Oh, I, okay. This is stuff I, I do just every see summer. This Vaseline, and I don't know. Oh, well, we why. have a jar of Vaseline. Okay. We have couscous. Okay. Uh, and what? So the first one's called baby couscous. Uh-huh. What we do? You made this up. No, this is well. Of course, this is part of my summer craft series. Okay. So we pour. <laughs> you get a glass bowl. Pour some couscous. Mm-hmm. And then what we do, and you can help me with this. Then we what we do is we open the Vaseline up. We get a baby. I'm so confused. We get a, <laughs> oh no! Well, this is summer crafts, and then what we? <laughs> what this we, is so weird. What are you doing? Well, what we do is we vaseline the baby's head. <laughs> well, if you don't want to do summer crafts series, I mean, this isn't crafts. This is yeah. creepy. Oh, this is summer. I do every summer. I do new crafts. <laughs> You summer crap. You just you just get its head shining like oh. a munchkin standing in the moonlight. Oh. Yeah. Look at this. What the? Yeah. So now what we do is you get the baby and you hold him upside down. And you dunk his head in the couscous. It's called baby. Is this something you've done before? Yeah. It's called baby couscous. Oh, this is creepy. Just stuff his head <laughs> right in the couscous. Yeah. So squish it around. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just grind it around. No. Yeah. This is so weird. <laughs> yeah. Hold that up to camera. Oh, oh yeah. You got, Why? You got baby couscous. Isn't that wild? Oh, look at that. 
Isn't that beautiful? So now he has hair. Yeah, now he's, well, he's got couscous. What's that mean? That's what this is. No, I know, but is there, are there a different meaning for couscous? No, it's just one of my summer crafts oh, okay. from my summer craft series. Now, do you sell, do you give this to one of your fans, the baby couscous? Uh, no, no, I, I, I keep them because uh, there's going to be more. Oh, no, because no. look at the eye. You did something. What? There's like more vaseline <laughs> under his eye. Oh, well, if you want to. Ew, what's coos- in his mouth? Ew, what what's is in this? his mouth? Where'd you get this baby? Well, he's my summer craft series baby. <laughs> so he's been through a lot. He's had peanut butter on him. He's had all kinds of stuff. Wow. Yeah. Man, he has yeah. a heavy head. Yeah, baby couscous. And then I have what's? I won't make fun of your crafts. It's what to each is known, you know. No, they're fun. Where's? Let me see. I think I have one more. Let me go get. I have a little. You play with him for a minute. Ew, no. I got one more little thing. (laughs) (laughs) His head's so heavy. No, it's not. Yeah, look at that. Baby couscous. I don't like him. Well, you'll like him in a minute because there's more. All right. No, I'll be nice. No, that's okay. There's another There's another part of the summer crafts. If you want to hold him for a minute. Okay. And then this one's called, you'll like this. All right. This is called baby barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> and how it works is you get a nice, like, summertime barbecue sauce. <laughs> you just pour it in a little dish like that. And then this is all summer crafts. And then you get a dirty eyedropper. Mm-hmm. And then look at this. You're going to love that. I'll do one eye. You can do the other. What you do is you soak up some of this barbecue sauce. <laughs> and you give baby some barbecue sauce summertime tears. Look at that. <laughs> Just weeping, <laughs> weeping the barbecue sauce. <laughs> Try, you'll love it. Try uh, this. Yeah. Here. Oh. Baby barbecue sauce. Here, soak up some juice. Right under that eye. <laughs> yeah. This is so weird. Yeah, but that's that's the joy of crafts, summertime crafts. Oh, yeah, right in his mouth. Look at that. Oh, hold him up to ca- your camera. Look at him weeping. Do you want to do that baby noise you were doing earlier? Like, Wait, I could do a better job. Yeah. Oh, keep going, keep going. That is so creepy. Keep going, keep going. Oh, he's weeping. Go. Can't you do baby voice? I feel like you could. That's <laughs> like a baby seal. Well, yeah, that, isn't that fun? Couscous. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Summertime yeah. crafts. I kind of, you know what? It maybe it forced me out of my comfort zone. Well, that's the joy of some, my summer craft yeah, series. Maybe just do whatever. Like they just they just take you right out of it. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Isn't that fun. That was fun. Thank you. So baby couscous and you could try it at home. Barbecue baby. Yeah, please try it at home, gang. Unbelievable. Uh, great job. I mean, I have one other one, but it's a little more extreme. I don't know if you want to try it. All right. It's called Watermelon Wonderland. All right. I I can't tell if you're making this on a spot or you really do. No, this this is my summertime craft series. Okay. And I knew you loved crafts, so I was like. Yeah, let's see it. All right, Amber, bring in the watermelons. Let's get it set up. Here we go. Bring in the watermelon. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's one. There's Whoa. two. Great. Thank you, Amber. Oh, my God. Now, what we do, we get the knife 
Oh, we gotta cut the water. Well, here's how it works. This is the watermelon summer craft. Here's you. Oh man. You cut the front off the watermelon. You're gonna have to do mine. I'm too. Yeah, nervous. I'm gonna do yours. Okay. I don't really use big knives. I know it's pretty intimidating. I learned this from. So what? All right, so that's yours. Okay. And then I do mine. It's called Watermelon Wonderland. And have you ever wanted an alternate career, like mm -hmm. outside of? Did you ever? Did you ever flirt with another career outside of doing stand up or acting? Mm. No. I did, and I'll tell you why. That you'll you'll see when we when we do this. So this is called Watermelon Wonderland. Okay. And what you do is you get your hand, and you just shove it right up inside that watermelon, like right. Up inside, right in the belly. No way. In the watermelon. Oh. Just shove it <laughs> right, right up what? in there. We're wasting good food. <laughs> yeah, but it's crafts. Think of it as crafts. So you Whoa, just, I don't think I want to. Yeah, think. it's pretty. This one's a little Ooh. advanced. I don't know if you want it. Mm. Look at that. Right up in there. Whoa. And what I wanted to do at one point in my life was I wanted to be a baby turner. You ever heard of that? No. So sometimes when a woman's preggers, the baby gets twisted around. Oh. And so I always wanted to be the guy that reached up and turned it because I felt Is like I was... Is that a real thing? Yeah, They'll a baby turner. Because if it comes out the wrong way, right, the baby will turn blue or have, you know, Ooh. his epiglottis will be... So I just, and then I always just imagined being a baby turner. While in the t watermelon. Yeah, so this sort of kind of replicates it. Wow. wow. Summer craft series. <laughs> Hang on. I'm stuck. Can you just pull mine? I got my hand stuck. <laughs> oh. <Whew. Ew. sighs> You're okay. a wild one. Yeah. <sighs> All right. I think I'm, we should still have these to eat. Yeah, you can pick away at it if you want. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, I did a little writing of my own. Yeah. And, I, you know, I'd love to share. I, you know, I, do you have a cinnamon journal? No. Okay, I keep a cinnamon journal. It's, it's not a book that's published, but it's sort of like my private. Why cinnamon? Just look at it. I love cinnamon. Right? You just answered your own question. Everyone loves cinnamon. It's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> right? It smells good. So yeah. I knew you wrote a book. I do a little writing, and I wrote, I wrote a little poem. Oh, I want to hear. If you'd like I'm to ready. hear. Yeah. This is a little poem. You like birds. You have a tattoo of a bird yeah. on your arm. I so, have a hummingbird. Right so there. why a hummingbird? That's a good way to lead into this. I, I think they're beautiful, and the colors, and I like a. Uh, the, at my grandma's funeral, there was one hovering over her casket. No. Yeah, so it was pretty cool. The, That's wait, why I got it. There was a hummingbird hovering over your grandmother's casket while we were having the funeral. So she you, was nearby. It was outside? Yeah. Wow. Pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, that was pretty. Is there symbolism behind that? I when think I, hummingbirds have some um, spiritual connection. If a hummingbird f hovers over your casket when you're dead, there, is there, does it mean something? Maybe. But I also was a fan of this artist for a while, and I liked her. Colors. Oh, you did? Yeah. Wow, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I would like some critters over my casket. Well, do you I have any? Oh, that'd be cool. What ones yeah. would you want? I think I'd want a wolf. Uh-huh. Or a black panther. Whoa. Yeah. That's edgy. Well, I just, I love their eyes. Yeah. I love the eyes of a wolf. I love the eyes of a black no, panther. No, what if the people around you just run because they get scared, but then... You know, or... Or maybe you, you have to say as a wolf, come back, though. It's just me. Or why, what if the wolf or the black panther takes some of them down, and then they're already at a funeral. Now I don't have to go alone. That's a good point. Have some, bring some friends with you. Got a couple of stiffies to take me into the white light. <laughs> Never hurts to have a little support around, <laughs> right? That's true. That's a good. You're very smart. Yeah, that's smart. 
All right, let's hear this poem. Yeah, this is uh, birds. Birds. This is. I wrote this for you because okay. I knew oh, you. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow, thank you. My cinnamon journal. Okay. <clears throat> it's called Little Birds. Okay. Little birds, tiny, crackling in my tree, teeny tiny tinies, sing a song to me. Little tiny birdies, twiddle, twiddle, twiddle dee. Birdie sniff a stinky, twiddle, twiddle. <laughs> well, I'm going to laugh. No, no, I'm not going to laugh. I thought you said stinky. Like you I farted. did. Okay, that's fine. Birdie sniff a stinky, twiddle, twiddle dee. <laughs> Little birds, tiny, tiny, mucous membrane, and you stink. Tiny, 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 bird, bird, smash a block of wood on an old lady's face. It's like an evil bird? Well, it was just, it's about birds, and I thought you'd like no, it. No, I liked it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Get rid of this. Yeah, that knife next <laughs> Don't to Don't like the... a knife sitting there. Wow. Yeah. You're a pro bird whistler. Yeah. Have you ever whistled like that and then some approach you? No. No, I only do bird whistling indoors. I like to play it safe. <laughs> yeah. Are you a nail biter? I noticed you're chewing your nails. Oh, it's these, uh, those little, s- no, I don't choose it. It's the, the hangnail that's all. Oh, like the yeah. Skin. Bugs. What causes a hangnail? We all get them. I, I don't know. Like all of a sudden your skin gives up and goes, you know what? <laughs> yeah. And it just like gives up and, you know, all year it's like yeah. fastened to your nail and then all of a sudden a little slice goes, <laughs> I quit. Yeah. And then like it just I, hangs there. Like when you pull up your pants. Yeah. I feel like that's when they arrive. They're going, oh. Yeah. Or, I don't know. It's like if you were driving and the hood of your car suddenly just went, like, and yeah, flapped yeah. up in front yeah. of you. Like, why Why does the skin on, around your nail give up? I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a. Like, what if that happened on other parts of your body? Just. Yeah, ew. I would pick it. You would? Yeah, I pick all those things. Do you eat your skin? Like when you, because some people when they pick the skin, be honest, they'll eat it. If I, if it's a little tiny, yeah, and I've picked it, yeah, sure, I'll you'll eat it. it. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes I'll toss it, and sometimes if I'm in a mood where I'm like, man, whatever, I'll keep it. If you had like, <laughs> if you had like a skin condition like psoriasis, oh, would I, you just pick it and eat, eat them like no chips? Way. No, that's I wouldn't do that. Okay. No, <laughs> I think you might. Amber, let's get the watermelons out. Let's, they're starting to stink, aren't they? Really? They have a smell? Yeah, oh, yeah. You can't smell them. Come on and grab these oh, watermelons th- out of here if you could. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Oh, look at those melons. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um... Tell me about your dog. I know you didn't bring him today, oh, but you Penny? you love your dog. I love my Penny. Like you, he's with you all the time, right? A she. Oh, it's a she it's a now. Uh. <laughs> well, let me guess. Trans meditation. Um, Wait, it's a she. Yeah, Penny. Penny or Panny? Penny. Penny, like a penny, penny. like a coin. Why'd you name her that? Are you I always know, dropping her? Lo- hmm. No. Why Why Penny? Just she looked like a Penny. Penny so, is like a spunky name. But is she copper in color? She's she's kind of gold. She's golden. So maybe Goldie. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Whoops. Do you have a dog? I used to have dogs. But I don't... I I, I, I I had to I had to get rid of my regular dogs, and I had to get a service dog. Do you, is yours... Is Penny a service dog? Oh. Service dog. Oh, really? Just to make her fly with me. Oh, so is it it's a phony? Sort of, yeah. So you, you she so you can get her on the plane. Does she have the little vest and everything? Yeah. 
Oh, and what, what do you claim her service is? Well, they're not supposed to ask you, right? Oh, they're not? They're not. God, I get asked every time. So what do you have? Well, I want to hear yours first, because if I have the same one, I'm going to be... I think I just say vertigo. Really? So you... my dizziness. Oh, okay. I and thought... I do have dizzy spells. I thought you meant she reenacts scenes from the Alfred Hitchcock movie. <laughs> I haven't seen that. You haven't seen Vertigo? No. Boy, that would be a service dog. All right, I'll check it out. <sighs> Suddenly your dog's jumping around do, reenacting scenes from a famous Hitchcock movie. Whoa. What a talent. That would be cool. Lucky you don't have a dog that needs to service your but psycho. I, I, haven't <laughs> 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 I haven't brought her on the road in a while, so I don't use oh. that, that. Okay. Unless it's I'm driving to a place that's local, then I'll bring her. But oh, really? My long flights, nah. Do you take her on stage with you? No, she's too nervous. Up there. Oh, she is. Yeah, because everyone will go penny, and then she gets all she gets frazzled. Has anyone ever challenged you on it though? Like sometimes you take a service dog. Like with me, I get it all the time. You take a service dog on a plane, and someone's like. They're, they're not a dog person. Like, hey, what's with the dog? Oh, yeah, sure. It's a, have you ever had, like, a no, confrontation? No, no. And Penny's pretty good on the plane, so. Is she? Yeah. <sighs> what have you had? So I had to get this service dog. I don't know if you suffer from arthritis at all or no. restless leg syndrome. So Is I have, that a real thing, the restless leg? Yeah, it's like... There a, was a guy in the front row of my show the other night. He was r- restless leg in it. Yeah, just your your legs and sort I, of starts... I, I kept seeing in the corner of my eye, I was like, I'm getting anxiety from this. Right? Yeah, but so, it's, is it, what is it? Well, you got it just from seeing it. Imagine having it. So now you understand the need for my dog, my service dog. So what it does is it make your leg trembles, and, and then if you have arthritis, oh. so imagine your joints hurt already... All you want to do is keep them still, but now you got restless leg syndrome. Your legs are twitching involuntarily. Oh. So I had to get a service dog, and I had to hunt high and low for this the Great Dane. And what I had to get is a dog. Uh, have you ever heard of a humper? Like humping? You know, they hump a leg? Yeah. So what happened, it was just by a fluke. I was at a friend's hu- at a party, and uh, my leg started going off. You know, it started kicking and thrashing and my friend had a great day and they're huge and this thing ran over and started you know dogs hump the leg and just started going nuts on my leg and all of a sudden i was like good lord my leg it, it alleviated the pain like just, <laughs> well, you've been fooling me this whole time no i'm telling you this my knee felt it felt like everything just gone and this thing humping like a arizona shitstorm. Okay. And so I located through a service, and uh, I got a Great Dane, and it's a service uh, humper. And I got this thing on the plane, and I get into trouble on planes, restaurants, because the dog will just be going on my leg, and I'm just sitting there. And it's a big dog, so it's looking me in the eyes while it does it. (laughs) This is weird. Well, (laughs) I guess some people are allowed to have service dogs, and some aren't. (laughs) God. I mean, sharing is caring. No, I, I look, whatever helps you, okay? Yeah, it helps. I mean, All right. oh, I, I did a flight from uh, LA to New York about three Are you weeks being for ago. Real? No, for real. I, you're, this you're, thing, you're, I was, no, I, no, this thing was humping my leg probably as we flew over Denver, it kicked in. And uh, Sparky just went berserk on my leg. Took about 45 minutes to really stop the restless leg from kicking around. But the guy in front of me, I was just kicking his seat. Oh. Man, I got the so restless bad. legs and I'm kicking this guy. He's turning around. Would you stop? And then finally he turns around and Sparky's humping my leg. And now he's like pressing the stewardess button. And it was a whole, like it just, when are people going to start caring about my afflictions? Yeah. Well. Uh, any new voices? Have we got any new ones? Melissa's like the master I impersonator. Mean, you 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 did voices that other people weren't even. You were even doing guys' voices. You were doing like Owen Wilson and. Yeah, you're right. You you, you were like a pioneer with voices. I think I was a pioneer. You were, yeah, yeah. and you re- still are. Hey, thanks. Yeah, I, I haven't really worked on any new ones. No though. newbies. Mm, no. 
do you get do you get tired of doing it because you 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 started with the voice stuff that's what really drew attention to you yeah. but then you sort of like all things you sort of then segued into snl now you're doing acting you're doing sketches you're doing do the voices start to take a backseat? Because that's what happened with Jim Carrey. Yeah, that's kind of where. Okay. I'm at. Yeah, where I'm, are you at? I think I'm like Jim with the art right now. Is that right? Yeah. Because yeah, Jim segued into art big yeah. time too. I think something interesting happened. I'm. Yeah. I don't crave. I don't know. I I couldn't keep that up forever of like just impressions. Yeah. It kills me inside because I think I'm funny as my, myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I. I I, and I, who cares if it, that means less fame? Then fine. I don't. I don't need to be in the celeb. No, there's world. no less fame. I mean, you're all, you're already there. Come oh, on. Oh no, no. I'm yeah. just. I'm just saying. Like I, 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 you can. That was one thing. I so I did a TED talk in March, and that's what it was about. About oh, doing so many voices because I started at 15, and wow. I wanted to be on SNL, and that was the dream. Was it really? Yeah, that was the main goal. And so I now didn't know that. afterward, wow. it's kind of this place where I'm like, right. That's why right now I'm in so many classes. I just want to expand and like and just get more knowledge on other things. And wait, what kind of classes? I mean, I'm taking Spanish. I'm taking guitar and piano. Wow. I did ceramics. Um, wow. And I've just been traveling the world on my own. I get well, not the world. I sounded, like, that sounded where, really cool. Well, it did, but where no, really? No, like I'm, Cleveland? <laughs> I went to Japan. No I way. Saw, I yeah. was just there recently. Really? Tokyo. Yeah. When were you there? A March, mid March, right when the right, the cherry blossoms were full. Oh, full bloom. wow! I was there the second week in January. Oh. Yeah, so not too far ahead of you. You were there in March. I was there in January. So you're. Before. Yeah, we missed each other by uh, a little bit. By we a few months. We could have held hands and skipped <laughs> through the cherry blossom petals. <laughs> Man, oh, it was wow. cool, huh? What What do you love about Tokyo? I love that city. I didn't know really what to expect. I've always wanted to go there, but it was one of, it's one of my top favorite cities now. I just, I couldn't explore much because it was pouring rain. I didn't, oh. I only went for a couple of days in Tokyo, but I was in Osaka and Kyoto more. Okay. And I liked Kyoto the most. Why? It, it was just beautiful. All the, the, the buildings are so cool. Yeah. And then the temples, I was just like, oh man, I just, I don't know. And I liked how quiet it was. It's quiet and the people are very civil. Yeah. And they're very they're they're very sort of quiet and they move through the streets with 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 kind of purpose. And the chairs, if you don't tuck your chair in after you eat at a place, someone will do it for you. Like they get Oh, they kind will? Of, yeah, cuz I didn't oh. on the I went on the bullet train. And yeah, I, I did and that. I didn't put the seat back up oh. and my neighbor he put it he put it back before we all left. The guy who was sitting beside you. Yeah, yeah. They were really nice about yeah. it. It wasn't like rude, but it was no. just, and then it made me like, oh, I got to clean up after myself and put things back. Yeah. There's a, like, there's a sense nice. of order. but I it, like it. Yeah, there's that sense of order, but it's not a sense of like, like someone's got a clamp on you. It's just, it feels like the citizens decided to all be orderly together. And take care of each other. Things and take care other. of things yeah. and it's nice so so cool. to put it in context for the three or four people watching yeah. uh, <laughs> well you know laugh. i know the three or four are very important they're important they might go to tokyo one day you're right you're right go ahead Talk. um but to put it in context if you've ever been to new york and you watch people running across red lights and green lights it's it's like Ooh. lights don't matter no. But then you go to Tokyo, which is as equally as big and bustling, and you get to an intersection. If the light's red, they will all stay there until it turns green, even if there's no oncoming traffic. They will all just stand there. No one will jaywalk. And I just thought, oh, the, I didn't get So the first few days I was there, I did a couple of jaywalk, and you could just feel them, like, staring at you, like, what is this madness? Yeah. And I, I actually felt like a like a douche bonnet, like it was breaking <laughs> I protocol. I like that word douche bonnet. Right? I'm yeah. going to use you that. You can use it. You want to use it in a sentence right now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. So the other day, I was a real douche bonnet because I didn't pick up my dog's poop. I'd like to use it in a sentence. Go ahead. Yeah. I, actually, my sentence sucked. It wasn't that funny. Okay. Well, I'll do one and then you All can right. try another one. Okay. 
I was on the plane the other day, and uh, some guy didn't get out of the aisle. I was like, hey, douche bonnet, you want to move it there, uh, Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> that was better. That was good. Back to you. It's, okay. your, it's your turn to douche bonnet. Um, We're playing douche bonnet tennis here on the Harland Highway podcast. Yeah, so the other night I was at the bar. had a couple beers in me, two, three, four, you might say. And then a shot of tequila. So then I started getting this, hey, fight mode, I'm going in my, and, uh, and someone was like, hey, did you spill your drink on me? And I said, no, let's take it outside. So then outside we're going. <laughs> and I said, you better watch your mouth, you douche bonnet. Boing. Wow. So you were disco dancing outside? Okay. <laughs> Never... I'm not the best acting. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's ever resolved an argument by breaking into Saturday Night Fever, but hey, douche bonnet, <laughs> you want to dance? Wow. Okay, Grease. Um, <laughs> that was more fun. It though. was good. It was that your was second better. douche bonnet was a that was a volley over the net for yeah, for game point. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll probably text you when I think of new ones. Oh, good. Stars. Okay. A good old, good old fashioned douche bonnet. Yeah. Um, did you see the snow monkeys when you were in Japan? No. Oh, I went. To, I took I the. Sorry, I took. Deer and went to Nala. Oh wow! What kind oh, of deer? Ahead. Oh, there's, 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 are those the deer that walk around in the city yeah. streets? Yeah. And you give them cookies. Yeah, and they're really friendly, but they're not. And they bow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They're, they're like, magical. That's yeah, that's sort of, and isn't that fitting for the Japanese culture because the J- yeah. Japanese bow, yeah, and the deer by association bow. So How weird is that? Wait, tell me about these snow monkeys. I missed out. So on. I took the bullet train. The, the the snow monkeys. It's the only place in the world they exist. Is in in the in the mountains of Japan in one specific area. And these snow monkeys are the only monkeys in the world. There's these natural hot springs that exist in the mountains. These mountains are full of snow. And the monkeys have learned to stay warm. They come and they sit. In the, they're like they're like fat tourists. They sit in the hot tub all day. Snow coming down. It's the so most it's beautiful. Snowing. It's snowing. There's and the snow's like landing on their fur, but they're just sitting. They got red faces, and they're just sitting there, <laughs> chilling out in the hot tub. It, it's hilarious. It's like Whoa. a it's like a retirement home for like hairy people. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's like they're just sitting around. Some of this every now and then you'd see a loaf of monkey poo float by, and they're just like oblivious. Whoa. You know. And is you get can you get close to them or no? you can get right close and some and when they're not in the water they're running around and sometimes they they they're not aggressive or they some monkeys you see where they jump on you and grab at you but these these guys would just walk around around your feet and then go in the water and they just sit there oh, I'm gonna yeah have to do that next if time. you go back go and do it it's so worth it wow because you take the bullet train to the edge of a park. Then you take a, a, a car up to the park, and then you walk for about 40 minutes through this park, through the mountains, through the hills, Whoa. and boom, you find these snow monkeys, and it's beautiful. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah, and the snow's like drifting down, like the big, the big flakes are coming down, and they're landing in their fur and just sticking there. They're not melting, and then they're, just, they're beautiful animals. And how did you feel? Were you cold up there staring at him? No, I, I got, we got dressed for it. We, oh. we, we brought gloves and hats and everything. Perfect. Yeah, it, cool. it, was, it was a real highlight. Oh, yeah. so you just went for a vacation. I went, it was part of a vacation, yeah. I did. That was the first leg, and then the second leg of the vacation, I went down to Indonesia and snorkeled around all the islands, the oh, tropical islands. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great, snorkeling with, like, sharks and trillions of fish. I want to swim with the whale shark. Oh, me too. Those things are beautiful. We want to do all the same things. Oh, cool. Hey, you want to go whale sharking, you <laughs> yeah. douche bonnet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go whale sharking, douche bonnet. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my God. You got your shoulders <laughs> going. You were like, you are grease. You I, truly uh, are. Yeah, I do feel like grease. Oh, God. Um, before we go... It's, oh, that went by fast. I know it goes by fast, right? Aww. But we're not done yet. Okay. I'm just saying before we go, there's a, a, a thing we do with all the guests, and okay. this is, and it's called. I think you'll like this. It's called words from a wooden shoe, <laughs> and this is an authentic Dutch clog. And what you oh, do? It reminds me of Heidi with Shirley Temple. Oh, remember Shirley Temple? That, that movie where she goes, "Do you like my new shoes? They are made out of wood." 
Such nice little shoes. Don't you think they look good? Like a dancer. <laughs> and she has her little wooden clogs and she's, yeah. she's kicking them. Oh, yeah. And what's that other, uh, what was the other famous song she did? I'm uh, a little ruppy kid. Or what? It, no, she did. Oh, oh no. <laughs> um, uh, Animal crackers in my soup. That one? <laughs> no, there's another famous one. Uh, I'm a little teapot or something. No. What was it? It's. Oh, God, it's going to come. It's one of those things that's going to come back to me later. Someone, uh, Some listener will know. Some listener. It's her most famous song. It was like, oh, something. Oh, God, that little. Anyway, I interrupted you. So no, sorry. I mean, first of all, just so our four or five viewers are clear, and I think you know this because you're a Shirley Temple fan. Yeah. Just so we're crystal clear and everyone knows this, um, Shirley Temple is actually a young uh, nine-year-old Kenny G, um, when he was before he got proficient with the piccolo or whatever he plays, he he was a child actor. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that curly hair—that's Kenny G. Oh. And then when he got older and his man parts started coming in, and he couldn't do the lower voice, any little kid voice, he decided to get into uh, into the redwoods or the windwoods. What's what's a what's a flute or a a, uh, a reed, something with a reed, the wind woods, the wild woods. The, I that? wouldn't know. What's that instrument called? Flute? Yeah, but. No, anything, trumpet. Yeah, no, that's a horn, but anything like a piccolo or a flute with a reed in it is called the wind woods or the woodwinds or, I don't know. Sorry. It's okay. You, did, I don't know. Did you stick with Shirley as as she got he got older and became like the famous like no. Kenny G? You no. don't have any Kenny G albums? No. So you just liked him when he was a little girl. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's inside this bo- shoe? So this is called Words from a Wooden Shoe. Okay. And what you do, Melissa, is you reach inside mm-hmm. <laughs> and you pull out a word. And you tell us if it, it pertains to your life, if it evokes a story or a memory. It's just a random words. Oh, I and, love it. And this. see if it, yes, if, if you love it and it's fun, we can even do two. But try reaching, don't look, you can't peek. There's nothing in there, it's just over here, huh? Yeah. And then tell us what your word says or words. Hit something with your car. Oh, interesting. Hit something. Have you ever hit something with your car? Or seen something, somebody hit something, or uh, hit with the car story? Well. Oh, here we go. I just remember I tried to prevent an accident from hitting me, so I honked naturally. Okay. To protect the cars. And then the guy sped up and threw pennies at my face. <laughs> he, threw, he threw your dog at you? Nope. No, no, no. Coins. He oh, threw them oh. in the car and it hit my face. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like there was a little change in the weather. What, what, what the hell? Who throws pennies? I don't know. I just what a bad. cheapskate. So then I pulled over and I was crying, you know, because it's. <laughs> what? what a baby. I'm Wait. such a baby. So, yeah. Someone threw a handful of pennies. Yeah. And it made me cry because <laughs> it sounded scary hitting the glass. Was it a woman or a man? I feel like it was a dude. My, I don't know. Because if it was a woman, you could have meet her. Could have meet her? Well, she's throwing coins. What do you mean, meet her? Like a coin meter? Oh. Douche bonnet. Douche bonnet. No, you're not. You can call I'm me just, a douche. Please call me the, one. I'm not that quick of a person. Could you just call me a douche yeah, bonnet? Yeah, you douche bonnet. Yeah, that, that evens things out. But well, wait That's a, not a good story, No, I, this is a fascinating... No, this is fascinating. So you're driving along... So how many pennies are we talking? I, I feel like there had to be at least five or seven. <laughs> so someone had them probably in their little cup holder. Yeah, that's what I imagine. They just went. Whew. So they're like, I want to get revenge on this girl, yeah. but only seven cents worth. Like, I don't want to go too large. Yeah, yeah. And so someone threw pennies. Your window was down. Yeah, it was. And so pennies are pelting off your face? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow, you know the only the only way this could have worked out in terms of synchronicity, uh-huh. and this is the morbid ending. Thank God it didn't happen. Right. Okay. But imagine 
she threw the pennies or he threw the pennies. They landed on your eyes. You crashed and died on the scene. The ambulance guys come up. You're laying there with pennies on your eyes. And they look like Coraline with the button eyes. Yeah. I mean, that would be a funny photo. Oh. And then a hummingbird flies over. Oh! <laughs> it says, look, let me give you my two cents worth. I remember I told my mom that story. Oh, and I, wow. and I, w- I thought she would be on my side. You know, like, wow, how could they? But she said, should have had your window open. <laughs> you shouldn't have had your window open. <laughs> you should have said, hey, mom, I made seven cents. <laughs> Up to yours. Now let's go to Arby's. Yeah. All right, do you want to do another one? You didn't seem happy well, with that one. It was, okay. But what about you? We, it's only for the guests, but I, right. I want you to be happy. Do okay. one more. Okay. What, what else we got? Oh, boy. Here we go. Disrespected. Oh, Okay. Sounds like that happened when someone threw fucking pennies in your yeah. face. But we can't do the same <laughs> one twice. We're not giving this guy two. Disrespect. Yeah. Man. I don't think I've ever actually said, I feel so disrespected right now. Can I, can I nudge you with this one? Yeah. Imagine the industry we're in. We put our wares out in front of producers, directors, other creative people. Yeah. You got to tell me at one point some douche bonnet director or producer went, uh, Melissa, no, okay. that's not what we're looking for. Uh, can, can we get someone else that, you know, there's got to be one of those stories. Yeah. Because I've, that's in our business for sure, you've got to have been disrespected. Yeah. There was, Sadly. Okay. This was one, this is a true little story. Here we go. Okay. The nudge helped, right? Yeah. Okay. So, is this a story that would bring barbecue baby tears to a baby? Maybe. Okay, let's hear it. So a couple seasons ago when I was on the SNL, uh, that singer Grimes was there, and she was going to play Bjork, and I do a Bjork impression, so oh, she wow. was going to do it. So. Is this Elon Musk's girlfriend, Grimes? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. But nice name, by the way. What's her sister's name, Skidmark? Grimes and Skidmark? Well, I mean, if you're going <laughs> to call him Grimes, hey, Skidmark, Grimes. Shit stain. Get in here for dinner. Anyway, sorry. Sorry. No, it's okay. So they were going to have, they were like, can you just stand in for her? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm not even in the sketch at all. And I said, no, actually, I'm not going to stand in. Yeah. And like went, an extra? I home. Yeah. Oh, see? And I was like, get one of the pages to do that. I'm not yeah. going to do it. <laughs> You were you were like one of the the full on <laughs> cast members. Yeah, it was a little thing, but it could really set you right? on fire when you're like, well. But you immediately felt disrespected. Yeah, I did. Because that like I lowered did. your value as yeah, a cast. Yeah, I a, do a killer Bjork impression too. Oh my god! <laughs> so that's just some, that's a good little story. That's a great story. Did you ever come back and say something to anybody about it? Did you let them know that that wasn't cool? Yeah, yeah, and they apologized. They did. Yeah. Did they realize, did they, did they fake like, the, oh, we did, we're sorry, or did they kind of know that they they kind of did that to you? I don't think they know in the moment because it's so okay. busy there that I don't think they'd do anything on purpose. Yeah. It's just, too, it's a wild environment. Yeah, did you take yourself out of that show? I, I thought I read a story where you yeah, just said, I, you know what? It was, time- too, it was just too much, and it was kind of making me just like comedy and myself, and I was like, I, I think, yeah. I think I'm... I think I'm a tender softy, which is great. That's beautiful, think, yeah. But that place, I think you need to have a shell that's like, this is, this is you know, really push. And I was like, I, I think I'm okay. It's aggressive like and competitive and, and, and almost yeah. maybe in a certain way, I've always got the sense that you almost have to give it to your fellow castmates yeah. a bit and a little backstabby and, mm. yeah, that's got to be tough. I'm the same way. I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to... But on the other hand, it's like I I have to learn to be on a team and help people and yeah. I think with stand up I could get so alone in my world, but yeah, I think I learned some good lessons for sure. But did you? Because I don't see you as a defiant like like you know like pushy person. W- were you able to go with the flow to a degree? I tried in some moments. I yeah. my bubble pop, you know. Oh really? Did you have any <laughs> outbursts? Like like little like. Yeah. Like yell at someone or snap? Not n- not snap, but but definitely there's been times I cried where I would, oh. or just kind of like when I'm trying to cuz I when I am when I need to 
be aggressive. I'm not a aggr- it tears come at the same time. Do you know? I'm one oh, of those okay. people. Yeah. That can't, like, I'm not ever like, you know, why don't you listen to me? Yeah. And it's never that. <laughs> Is it I ever wish. this? Why don't you want to listen to me? <laughs> yeah. And I you, wish. It's hard to take your anger seriously when you're the, disco dancing, you know? <laughs> yeah. And when you sound like this. <laughs> But I, um, oh. no, no, but it's, it's okay. It's good. I, I had to learn how to speak up for myself. Yeah. I, I'm a mumbler. If oh, I, really? Yeah. I mumble when I need to, uh, ask for something. Cause I'm, well, people pleaser too. I don't, yeah. I, I, it's just in my bones. You know, it's a little bit, t- and that's the one thing I, I loved about you when I saw you on America's Got Talent all those years oh, ago. Man, and that's little Melissa. Well, you you know, I've had very few guests. I did the Harland Highway as an audio podcast for 11 years before I started doing this. Oh. And I must have had, I could count on two hands the amount of guests I had. And you were one of them because yeah. I would watch you on America's Got Talent. I go, she's just the sweetest. <laughs> Like you would smile and laugh, and I go. I just I was drawn to your your beautiful energy. Oh, thanks. And you were one of the few people I had come in and I interviewed on the audio podcast. That's right. And and I what I was gonna say is it's it, look I'm in this industry too, and you have to learn how to stand up for yourself. But it's it's hard when you're a gentle, kind, nice spirit and soul. Yeah. And and y- you know how to stand up for yourself in your head. You're like, well, this is my line. But then you realize a lot of the other people in this industry can be very aggressive and they don't have the time or the patience or the care for your sensitivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're ready to yeah, just plow over sure. to get where they need to go. And so when you're a little more sensitive and have a softer touch, you're right, it's, it's a hard thing to confront and it's a very hard thing to... Um, convey and communicate to someone when that's not how you're wired yeah yeah and i could see that being a problem but you know you 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 did three years there right six you did six years six. Oh well that's a feather in the cap to like uh, yeah that's pretty good well I, I feel like i give up fast that's pretty good for me no you didn't give up at all to, to you you outlasted many people there's a lot of people that didn't last that long and but what i'm saying with with your kind of sensibilities to last there in that environment that that's amazing Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. No. Thanks, Harlan. Did you love it? Like outside of that part of it, did you oh, did you love yeah. the creativity of it and I, the comedy and I I loved knowing I could I was bringing joy to a, a huge audience. Yeah. That's what was magic and being like, man, this was I, every time I did something that you know shined right through me, then I felt like, oh, I'm living. I'm I feel like magic. Like just yeah. true magic. So so oh. that was that was cool. It's funny because I've noticed in this interview we, we have a lot of similarities. Yeah. And and one of the things you just said is about the, the the best part of comedy for me is what you just said, bringing joy to people. Yeah. And I always say people go, what do you do? And in my head I go, we're door to door salesmen, and what we sell is joy. Because we we don't know all these people, a lot of people, the three or four watching now, we right. don't know their names or their faces. Right. But it's 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 Kevin, <laughs> David, David, and Kelly, Tristy. and and um, Kelly, Kelly, and uh, Douche Bonnet, Douche Bonnet, right. yeah. But um, <laughs> it's it's so gratifying to bring joy to people. You know, you can't see them, but you know they're out there receiving it. Yeah. And I think me and you are the same. This this is yeah. where it f- flows from for me and you. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's again, that's why going back to those years ago when I had you on, I was like, I, I just love your energy and your vibe. So Thanks. if we were on SNL together, I think me and you would have been like oh, the two the, buddies. The, we would have had each other's back. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. That and my my little dog Sparky and your little Couscous baby. <sighs> that would have been a good sketch. Should I bring Couscous baby up just to s- while we to say, say goodbye? Bar? Yeah, sure. Okay, let me get Couscous baby. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Shirts Ew. all stained. <laughs> Ew. Hold them up. And <laughs> I don't want to touch them. <laughs> so I know. I don't want to. S- I don't want to touch him. I don't want to see him. <laughs> he look at his hair. He looks like that that uh, kickboxer Chuck Liddell. Remember the Iceman Chuck Liddell? He's got the he's got the couscous mohawk hair. Oh, Goodbye, everyone. I hope you had a 
fun time. Hey, let me give them more tears as we go. Hit the theme music. Keep them going. A little higher. A little higher. There he goes. Oh, God. <laughs> Truly a baby douche bonnet right there. <laughs> oh, get him do your disco dancing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our thank you. To Melissa, and give me the name. Come on. Via that, Senor. Via Senor. I always get the inflection wrong. It's okay. And cool. Melissa, cool. Melissa Via Senor. And before you go, tell everyone where they can find your book. You got to get oh, yeah. uh, Whoopi Goldberg, I'm Awesome. <laughs> and uh, tell them where they can get you it, can, where they can see you yeah. tour. Melissa's Just, touring all over the country. Let yeah, them know. Go to MelissaViaSenor.com. Yeah. Melissa V Comedy on, you know, Instagram and stuff. Uh, yeah, my book's available, art prints. Uh, and I'll see you soon. Yes. Did you see how you timed that? Just that when the, the thing out? Yeah. Wow. All right. Cool. Bet you can't do it again. All right. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being on the Harlan Highway. Until next time, check out Melissa's, uh, all her social media, her tour, her comedy, her Thanks. book. And until next time, chicken chow mein. Yeah. Douche bonnet. Wait, baby. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're, thanks for being had. <laughs> Wait, no. Still going? No, not after that. All right. I think I deserve a final douche bonnet for that comment. Yeah. You want to give me one? Goodbye, all you douche bon. No, goodbye, you sweet folks. Don't be a douche bonnet out there in the world. Be a good bonnet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's the disco. <laughs> Travolta. We're out.